here's a smartphone you didn't see coming. This is the Asus Zenfone 6, and it's one of the only phones where I actually got more and more excited the longer I spent with it. I just genuinely can't wait to show you what it can do, as well as a clear plastic case and the device itself. In the box, you get a USB Type-C cable, you get an 18 watt fast charger, and you get a pair of above average looking earphones. And here is the device itself, a phone that manages to tick pretty much all the pillars of a good 2019 flagship, but at the same time comes with two standout features that are far more than just gimmicks. My first impression was positive. I don't think it's going to win any beauty awards with its squarish aesthetic, but the phone is encased in glass and definitely feels every bit as nice as the devices it's up against. So one thing I'm thankful for is that as well as doing a couple of crazy things which I'll come to, Asus has made sure they ticked the key boxes. It's using the Snapdragon 855 chip and up to 8 gigs of RAM, so it's up there with the most powerful phones in the world right now. You only have to look at Antutu for affirmation. It's about 30,000 points ahead of my Exynos-based Galaxy S10, and just behind the OnePlus 7 Pro. Oh yeah, and this phone is way cheaper, but I'll come to this as well. You've got that headphone jack, you've got stereo speakers on the bottom and the front, and it actually comes with a triple slot tray, so you can load two SIM cards at the same time as a micro SD card. Okay, so two features. This phone has two flagship features that I'd say are compelling enough reasons to want one. The first being this camera module. It flips around, but unlike other implementations that can switch between the front and the back, it's a motorized system designed to give you complete control over the angle, and this leads to some really cool outcomes. Motion tracking lets you pick an object, and the camera starts to follow that object to keep it in the center of the frame. It works like magic. You've never seen anything like it on a phone. On top of that, panorama shots get a bit of a facelift. Say you find a really tall building or an object, one tap on this button and the phone will automatically start panning upwards to capture the whole thing. Oh yeah, and the flip side of this is that you can do the same in landscape mode. The resulting resolution of these shots, 13,440 by 2048. Quite impressive. You can also use the volume keys to adjust the camera angle manually, but I do wish that the module had a constant acceleration. The actual motion is a little juddery, so that kind of restricts what you can do with it. More importantly though, this is thankfully not just a funky looking camera setup, it's actually a really capable one too. The main camera is 48 megapixels, based on the same IMX586 sensor as the OnePlus 7 Pro. You get really powerful high dynamic range and a great looking night mode, which actually takes 16 raw photos and meshes them together. I did a couple of side-by-sides with the OnePlus 7 Pro, and well, let me know what you think. Anyways, that second camera is a 125 degree ultra-wide, and to be clear, 125 really is ultra-wide. It's even wider than the S10's 123, but things get even better. The additional benefit of having this motorized setup is that anything you've got on the rear camera, you can also have on the front, with a couple of exceptions. So that means you get the ability to take mega wide selfies, you get a laser focus system, which many phones rear cameras don't have, and you can record 4K video at 60 FPS on the front. The quality blew me away. To give you an idea of the quality, this clip right here is being filmed on the phone's front camera in 4K resolution. Oh yeah, and you saw how stable that footage was, right? That's pure electronic stabilization. This phone doesn't have OIS at all, and yet it somehow pulls it off. Also, I'm not exactly sure how useful this is, but because you can stop this camera module at any angle, you can also use this phone's camera as a periscope. You could technically peer around corners, or even be looking down and seeing on your phone screen what's actually in front of you. You do miss out on a telephoto lens, but Asus have said that they'll be adding a 2 times loss to zoom via a software update, but we will have to wait and see on that one. You also get this smart key at the top of the phone, which on one hand is a bit of a stretch to reach, but at the same time it's a completely configurable button. You don't see that very often. I've currently set mine to open the camera with one tap, but then with two taps I've made it open the camera and flip it around. The second headline feature this phone comes with is a 5000mAh battery, so for some perspective that's over 10% larger than the behemoth cell on the Galaxy S10 5G, which by the way also has a much larger display. And this is the kind of capacity where it's not a question of whether you're going to get through a day, but whether or not you can get through two. It can reverse charge other phones with 10 watts of power, and it itself charges with 18 watts. 
Mind you, that's not super fast considering we've had phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro just launched with 30 watt charging, but there is a reason. Faster charging batteries need a thicker separator in between their anode and cathode, so essentially they end up taking more space. So this slower charging speed is the only way Asus has managed to fit this monster cell into a body that's not too monstrous. The phone also has a 6.4 inch display that fills pretty much the whole front of the phone. It's a full HD plus LCD though, which didn't exactly have me jumping up and down in excitement, but it is better than the specs suggest, just not as bright as some of its OLED counterparts. Zen UI 6, the software on the phone, was also a nice surprise. It's much closer to a pure Google aesthetic and it shows a company that's really listening to what people want. It's based on Android 9 and whilst it's not functionally too different from past versions, you do get some reachability features as well as a dark mode. I like that there's a built-in screen recorder, as well as an outdoor mode, which lets your speaker rack up another 20% volume at the cost of a bit of distortion. Asus is also promising an Android 10 update in the second half of the year. Okay, so a couple of other things worth mentioning about the Zenfone 6. To keep the cost down, there is no IP rating and no support for wireless charging. Neither are deal breakers for me, but still worth bearing in mind. The other thing is pricing, and right now I only have the price in euros, but it's going to start at 499. That's quite a bit cheaper than even the base standard OnePlus 7, the non-pro model. So this is exciting. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated. And as always, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.